Hello and welcome to this episode of the English Verb Series. Today we're looking at the verb make. So as a brief overview, we've got the infinitive to make, past tense made, past participle made, ing for making and third person makes. But to really break this down, we need to look at the phonemic script. So here we see in the basic form make, we end the word with that k sound. So there's no voicing. However, when we move on to the past tense and past participle, we need to have a voiced d sound. So the vowel stays the same, but we switch to a d, d. So that goes from make to made, made with a, a vibration in the throat. As always, our ing form has that lovely ing at the end. And you really need to make sure that you've got vibration and some uh, resonance up in your nose for that sound. Making. And as you'll see, the stress is on the first syllable of the word. Making. Third person then, makes. Because the, the word make ends in that lovely k, we don't voice the ending. So when we make our plural, um, sorry, our third person singular, we add a s, an unvoiced sound. Makes, makes. So you want some air to be hissing out of the mouth. So to whiz through those again, repeat after me. Make, made, made, making, makes. Some examples then. Uh, they made such a mess yesterday. She made a beautiful cake for my birthday. So in the first example, we've got a definite time, yesterday. And in the second example, although we don't know when it occurred, I mean, around the person's birthday, we assume, um, but we don't know when from this context, but we do know it was a finished event in the past based on the choice of verb made. Past participle examples then. He has made a lot of money selling his paintings. So although the selling of the paintings um, occurred, we assume in the past, we're thinking about his current situation. He has made a lot of money up to this point in time. And then in a question form, we get our auxiliary at the beginning, have. Have you made those changes to the rotor yet? Now, this is an interesting one. We've got the word yet at the end, which makes me think that we expected changes to be made. So if I ask, have you done something yet? I'm hoping the answer is yes. And probably I've already asked you to do the thing. So that's that's a lovely little signal we get with yet. ING form then. Stop making such a fuss. Wow, you're really making a mess there. So what we see, stop making such a fuss. This is me, perhaps, um, I don't know, somebody falls over, they're not injured, but they're on the floor crying and screaming. I might say, stop making such a fuss. And wow, you're really making a mess there. Maybe somebody is cooking in the kitchen and there's food all over the place. So in both situations, there's this ongoing activity signaled by the ING. Finally, the third person S then. My boss makes me work overtime every week. Eating too much ice cream makes me feel sick. In both of these situations, what we get a sense of is something habitual, something that happens regularly. So just to review then, we have our infinitive to make, and then past tense and past participle made, ing making, third person makes. So if you found that useful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the rest of the playlist for lots of other verbs 
and also some focus on those ed, ing and s endings. Thank you very much for watching and have a lovely day.